Hello everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Today I wanted to tell you about an update on a sweater, um, a new knitting project that I started um, about a week and a half ago and let you know how it's going. Um, this is a striped sweater for Rick and if you follow me on Instagram you've probably seen some pictures um, related to this project. So what inspired me to start this project um, was this abundance of kind of leftover yarn um, that I had in the stash, worsted weight, um, all from the same maker, a mystery two-ply um, that's probably a couple decades old. Um, and actually my friend Jennifer from Heron Pond Designs gave this to me um, a few months ago when I was helping her do a stash uh, reorganization. So thank you, Jennifer. Um, and I took it initially thinking I was going to make a bunch of hats for people, um, but that project never really took off. So one of the inspirations for this sweater was that um, Rick and I like to watch this show on archaeology called Time Team. Um, the show's based out of the UK, and one of the uh, head archaeologists, uh, Mick, likes to wear these brilliant rainbow sweaters. Um, and while that's not exactly the yarn that I have, um, I did have, uh, you know, this stash of multi uh, or different shades of yarn and I wanted to use them up. And so I thought a striped sweater, um, in a slightly more muted palette would look nice on Rick. Um, the other inspiration I had was kind of a re-knit of a pattern. Um, the first sweater I ever made for Rick was this, uh, top down raglan from um, a recipe by Barbara Walker out of this book, Knitting from the Top. This is a really classic knitting book um, that, you know, came out way before Ravelry, um, but kind of as knitting was starting to see a revitalization. And um, if you've ever kind of made up your own recipe, this might be a book that you, um, that you turn to. I was just looking for the publication date. Oh yeah, original copyright 1972. So this thing's older than I am. Um, but it's a great book. Um, never mind the model with the bright 80s um, palette on the outfit. Um, what's nice about this book is it's not really a pattern book. It's more of a recipe book and it tells you how to go about thinking about a sweater or a garment. Um, she has skirts and other things in here. Looking at the yarn that you have and pairing those two up and looking at the size of the person that you're knitting for and making sure that that garment's really going to fit that person. Um, so it was a little much for a beginning knitter to take on and I was very challenged the first time I used the, uh, the book to make a sweater for Rick. But I wanted, I had wanted to go back to that classic raglan shape and I thought the striped sweater would be a great opportunity. And it's so funny because you think as a knitter that you're progressing, but then you have, you know, setbacks on different projects and then you're not really sure and you start to question your abilities and, and how your skills progressing. Um, but going back and re-knitting a pattern from eight years ago, I'm going, oh, this makes perfect sense. This is a piece of cake. Um, so, you know, it's funny because you can go back to an old pattern and just see how far your skill and your comfort level have taken you in that time period. So, um, like I said, this is a classic raglan and it top down and I did have a little trouble deciding on the order of the colors. Um, they're kind of a mishmash of different colors and I wasn't exactly sure how to order them. The other um, difficulty is I don't have the same amounts in all the colors. So picking a repeat that would use up all the colors um, evenly and give me a nice variation in stripes um, was a little bit tricky. Um, what I've used to decide my color order was I grouped each um, set of colors into their tonal uh, family, so light, medium, and dark shades, and then from there decided on a repeat. Um, and a good way to look at tone, if you're not sure how light or dark your color is, is to take a picture of it and turn it to black and white. And most smartphones these days um, have a filter right on there so you can do the conversion really quickly. And that will tell you whether you have lighter or darker values and in turn that will dictate 
whether the stripes are going to blend into each other or whether they're going to really be pronounced. Because um, your eye, you might not notice it, but your eye really sees value quite strongly, um, even more than it does the shade of the color. And it can be deceiving. In this case, um, I thought that the purple was going to be a lot darker than it actually is in terms of value. So that kind of bright grape shade got lumped in with lighter shades like gray and rose. And then um, the plum shade, which I thought was a medium, is actually really quite dark. And so that one I've lumped in with like kind of charcoal family and sorted out my repeats. Um, now I did think I had a plan for how I was gonna do the stripes and I cast on the sweater and then I started picking colors at random for some reason. I think maybe I just didn't trust my initial um, assessment and knitted a couple inches and then looked at it and said, mm, this isn't really looking. And sure enough, when I took the black and white photo of my kind of collar swatch, um, it, it didn't pop um, because all the dark shades were lumped together and all the light shades were lumped together. So I set that aside and I said, okay, Sarah, you know, stick with your plan. And sure enough, um, the new order of colors is really starting to look nice. I've got down basically to just above the armpit. So I have a couple more inches to knit um, on the all over kind of the cowl section before I can uh, put the sleeves on uh, holders and continue knitting with the body. Um, so that's where I am with the project. So far, so good. It's going really smoothly. And like I said, um, having worked this same pattern recipe before, um, I really feel confident about it. Of course, um, maybe I'll jinx myself. We'll see. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. I'll keep posting to Instagram um, pro project updates, and I've, I'll give you a complete um, project review when it's all finished and blocked. With any luck, um, I don't like setting hard deadlines on big projects like a sweater, but with any luck, I'll get this done in time for Solstice uh, gift swap. So thanks for being with me today and um, feel free to check out my Ravelry page. I'll link to that in the show notes and you can see all my current projects and things that I've made in the past. Thanks a lot. Happy crafting and tune in again next time.